It's Friday, and I want to know what's on your mind. So this is a show about real people, real issues, having a real conversation every Friday. So with that said, we'll go ahead and do the introduction. Anybody can jump right in. Just tell us your name and what you're doing currently. Hi, everyone. My name is LaCora Stevens, and I am currently uh, working as a producer and TV host. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. I'll go next. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Latina Baxter. I'm the owner of Marley and the Maternity. We are a full service doula agency um, currently in Houston, Texas, and we help moms from pregnancy, fertility, birth, and postpartum. Um, and I do a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> on the side. Wonderful. So. <laughs> Welcome. All right, Jason, you up next, buddy. Yes, my name is Jason Christopher Duchon. I'm an actor, singer, um, also writer. I have um, a screenplay that I'm working on and a TV pilot. And I'm also an early retired school teacher. Awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. All right. School teacher? Yes, we need, oh, goodness. That's an understatement. Right. 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 So we'll, we'll get right into it. So our first question of conversation is, is it fair that single status individuals pay more in federal taxes. Who want to jump around that one? The easy answer would be yes, it's fair because they don't have children. You know, that's what most people would say. No, I'm not saying that I agree. Yeah. But I'm just saying most people would say, but you don't have a family to take care of. It's just you, you know, there are no obligations. But I don't think it's fair. I truly feel that everyone should pay across the board and that's from singleness as well as wealthiness i truly feel that we should all be paying the same amount just like we do our post-it stamps <laughs> hey i feel you i'm with you on that one anyone else i agree i agree um we all make the same amount of money but yet if you have children you usually have a spouse and both of you can support it if you're a single parent then i can understand it's different but I think we all should pay the same amount of taxes. We do the same amount of work, and we also um, get the same amount of money. So I think it should be equal. Absolutely. Well, I'm, oh. I'm going to disagree. Uh -oh. <laughs> Just, okay, here we go. All right. Just because I benefit from that, <laughs> that tax. So I have uh, three stepsons, two kids of my own, and I'm married as well. And our refund is phenomenal <laughs> every year. So I'm going to disagree just because I'm on the receiving end of it. But I do agree that we should be paying the same amount, not necessarily the same dollar amount, but I think mm -hmm. it should be the same percentage. That. So it's the same percentage across the board, depending on where you are in your income, but not the same dollar amount because $1,000 to somebody that makes $20,000 a year versus $1,000 to somebody who makes a million dollars is completely different. So we can't base it on an actual dollar amount. Um, the percentage would be better. I agree because, you know, one thing about it, my sisters, they have kids and they get the best income return taxes I've ever seen in my life. And whereas me, the old single lady without a cat, <laughs> You know, I, I'm like, well, this is it. This is what I have. So I do feel the percentage, absolutely. But I'm like, golly, sometimes I feel like it isn't fair. But, you know. I know. You. I'm with you. I feel it's un totally unfair. Just because someone has opted in their life at the moment to not to have kids, does that call society to penalize them financially? Everyone has a choice to have a family or not have a family. So in that choice, why does society have to, someone that's single have to be penalized? I just, I don't get it. They do it all the time, Sheila. They do I it know. all the time. I do. I do. Anything else on that one? Um, no, I was going not, to say, well, I was going to say when it comes yeah. to occupations because Jason he's an educator or a former educator I too am a former educator mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of times I think there should be you just like how parents have benefits you know for uh, yeah. those children I really feel like with teachers uh, that there should do there should be a little extra I think that they should consider I think that 
tax, when we look at tax, the IRS, we know that you're going to have to die one day and you have to pay those taxes. Uh, and when you look at the word, the IRS, it's there. It's supposed to come together. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that they really need to dissect how they, uh, you know, basically use taxes for the people and against the people, you know? Yeah. I think they yeah. really need to reevaluate re as we go through this whole situation with life uh, yeah, uh, in America. They need to take a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a whole nother show, Sheila. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. On the, <laughs> on the utilization of taxes, that, yeah, that could definitely be a whole other conversation and show. Definitely. But they, the government does not use our money wisely. Absolutely. So. About it. Is social me media ruining society? Should people get fired for what they say on social media? Absolutely. Uh oh. Okay. I I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. I I don't know if I would say that it's ruining society. I think it um yeah. it's kind of our new normal. We had kind of have to get used to in the way we use it. But I think <laughs> that whatever you say on social media, you should be held accountable for in your real life. So if you're going to call somebody out of their name on social media, then you need to be able to step up and say that in real life. And if you can't say that in real life, then you shouldn't say it on social media. So I actually work in human resources too. Um, mm -hmm. That's my day job, if you will. Um, but I, we hold a lot of our associates accountable for what they put on social media. Um, and you can lose your job for what you say because you are a, especially if you have your position or your job tied to your social media platform, um, because you are a depiction of the company um, when you're out there saying all kinds of things. So absolutely, you should be held accountable. I, I think, yeah. <laughs> you say yes, okay, all my right. Teaching, my teaching career was destroyed because of social media. Oh, wow. I know. What it happened, Jason? It wasn't because of me. Mm -hmm. um, a former student got a hold of my photo and did a fake Facebook page of me. Oh. wrote good things on it and i had a lawsuit against lausd because of that what was wow. is that lausd thought it was my facebook page and they never asked me if i did it wow um they just um suspended me without pay, with pay and said i was under investigation for alleged misconduct mm. and they sent a letter out to um 3, parents teachers and students and stated their um, the staff was um, taken off campus and everybody knew it was me and what happened is they passed the Facebook page all over the school. Um, I didn't even know about the Facebook page till several days later and um, I knew exactly who did it and the kid who did it was arrested but LAUSD refused to exonerate me. Wow. Because um, they wanted to brush it um, under the um, rug right. and they wanted to make make it look like nothing's wrong and they wanted me to return to the same school in the same teaching position but they didn't tell me that there were threats against me because of the Facebook page and they never exonerated me until the case was settled Wow! and one of my screenplays is based on what happened to me oh I would love to see that and how that plays out definitely that's, that's horrible that's horrible Horrible. Yeah. And that, that happens to a lot of people. I mean, yeah. uh, that's really unfortunate, Jason, that they didn't do you due diligence. But yeah, that does happen to a lot of people. Social media is completely out of control right now. Um, I unfortunately, if I didn't have to use it for business purposes, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be on it. I, you know, I, but I have to use it for marketing purposes for my business. Other than that, I would I would delete all my accounts and never open it up again. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be a time waster, but it can be very prevalent. Like right now, what's going on in the world with Black Lives Matter, what we just saw with George Floyd from, you know, a young lady we saw in which I don't, you know, in entertainment, one writer said that, oh, she's considered one of the best filmmakers, forget Spielberg, but the young lady who actually recorded the death of George, the murder, excuse yes. me, of George murder. Floyd. Yes. Um, we have, we would not have seen this. The world would not have had this shift had it not been for this social media. So it has its positives, but it has its negatives. Right now, we are using it to arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. You know, like we are saying, 
with social media because we all can't go up there we all can't fly out there we all can't write letters we all can't type but we are using social media to influence others to hop on board and to educate them about social justice um about you know yeah. policy about voting uh just about right so is it ruining no but it is exposing it's exposing and should you fire someone about what they put on so social media? Absolutely, you should. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, I think you should. Wow. You don't I, think so? I, I, I don't think anyone should be fired using social media if they're vocalizing their opinion in a, in a matter that they're just vocalizing their opinion. I don't think that should hinder someone's job because they, one, a job is a job. A yeah. person is a person. A person has a human life before the job. To I know that the when the person is connected to the job, if the if the person is not doing that de anything detrimental in the name of the job or the company, then he or she has the right to vocalize their opinion freely. You get back into freedom of speech. Well, yes. if you get from someone is not from a from a business perspective, if you have a person voicing their opinion, and I'm just going to use racial as an issue, if you have if you have somebody that is vocalizing their opinion on race, it's one thing to have an opinion on the matter. It's another thing to be out there blatantly calling people out of their name, using derogatory terms and things like that. Okay. And then you have to come that back. I agree. So you have to come back, think of it, you have to come back into the workplace mm -hmm. where there may be other cultures there. And now you have created a hostile workplace because other people on their feed are seeing what, what it is that they're mm -hmm. saying. So then you, you've got hostility within the workplace and that does, that's not conducive to any business thriving. So that's where it comes to the point where you have to make a decision. And I'm just speaking because I do this as a profession, yeah. you have to make a decision in order to, is this right for your business or do we care about, is it, you know, freedom of speech? You, yeah, you can have freedom of speech, but mm -hmm. you can't go out there saying all kinds of things that are going to um, create an environment in other people's worlds that is not conducive to business running, thriving relationships, um, because and then you have to also think of it from the business perspective right if they know that this person is speaking this way that's going to limit their clientele like if i ever found out that one of my employees was out there speaking derogatory about a certain culture that limits my ability to be a provider and to provide a service to them because then they're going to look at the company a certain way and you can't you just can't do that so that's <laughs> That's so, my opinion. So here's the fine line. So you and HR. So what so what I know there would be guidelines. So what would you tell your employee? Again, you you you're on that fine line, what they can say and cannot say. That's you know, what I mean, what would what advice what so would you we, tell them? so we hold them to an ethical, so in our handbook, I'll just kind of speak freely, we hold them to an ethical standard right mm -hmm. and if the work if what you put on social media and it has to be if you're tied to the company if the company's name is tied to your social media then you have broken company ethics because you are no longer ethical or what we would consider to be you know a um a good depiction of the company and yes we can fire you for that now that I, I would probably agree with, if their social media has the name of the business in which they're doing business under and working with, that I agree. But if they have their own personal page, how is, and it has no association or connectivity with whatever company they're working with, how then that caused a red flag that they could be fired? Well, what I would say the mission statement, if I am a preschool principal, um, but then you are using your social media for porn, mm. that does not wow. reflect yeah. what we do. Exactly. So now the parents are like, wait a minute, 
Wait a minute. What's this teacher LaCora doing with this porn? Now, that was never me. But I'm just saying, it's not a reflection of their goal, their mission, uh, or anything that they stand for. So I think that if it is opposing or simply contrasting, downright disrespectful, disgraceful, then I think there's a right, you know, to do so. Yeah, that part I agree. Jason, you wanted to chime in. Yeah, I agree with what's been said. Um, there's a happy medium. Social media, social media is educational. Getting the word out is really educational. Um, I use it um, to talk you know, about my dog, um, career things. There's also a happy medium that I think some of it should be censored because if somebody is anti-Semitic, racial, homophobic, any kind of slur like that, that should be not allowed on social media. I think some of it should be censored. We do have freedom of speech. But there is a boundary. Yeah. And you have someone like this person in the White House yes. who is screaming lies all the time. Yes. And um, they're allowing him. Now they're starting to censor him. Mm -hmm. they, they have to, there has to be a happy medium between censoring things that don't belong and educational and social meaning friendship. Yeah. 100% agree with Jason. I always, I often look at things on social media and I'm like, they are allowing this? Mm -hmm. Like certain words, you know, like you could automatically uh, type in words mm -hmm. to be censored or flagged. I always wonder why don't they have this flagged anyway? Like I recall there was a student who uh, killed himself or shot himself mm -hmm. on Facebook Live. And it took like a couple of days to right. take it down. And it's like, what are, you, what are we doing? So I do feel absolutely that things should be censored, uh, that they should take these you know, complaints more seriously. But as Jason said, you know, it is a great tool to educate you know, because I too am in entertainment. And with my show, I've been able to you know, reach out to different production companies. And I'm like, hey, I'm producing a show in the middle of quarantine, relationship deep dive, love to hear it, here you go, you know? So yeah. it, it's extremely important for connection um, for even like my Nana. She's in Indiana. And we talk every Thursday on Facebook. Um, yeah. You know the little video thing? Oh, the video thing, yes. yes. Yeah, the video thing. So it's like, it's beautiful. I wish I could be there with my Nana, but mm -hmm. I can't, you know, so it's just nice to see her beautiful face every Thursday. So um, you can't, you, you can't, it's nothing like it, you know what I mean? So I would never say that it's ruining, but it is certainly, certainly exposing some things, the ugly things out there. Um, so I think it's needed. I do think that social media is certainly a tool that's needed. Cool, right, that was a good one. All right, we're gonna switch it up just a little bit here. Here's another one for you. What would you put in your emergency to go bag? Go bag. I got one by the door. I do too. Mine is by the door too. <laughs> What's yes. in yours, Sheila? What do you have in yours? Well, I bought one of those already packed emergency backpacks. Mm -hmm. And I added in there some socks, a pair of jeans, a shirt, and some other things that I thought too. You know, I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean, and my uh, a list of all my passwords. <laughs> Yeah, That's good. I don't and have that. Tell me to pick up, disconnect my external hard drives and take those too. Ooh, that's a good one too. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Who's up next? My phone, vitamins, medication that I take, uh, food, and a little baby girl who is right over here. Roxy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roxy. Say hello. Hey, Roxy. <laughs> yeah, my, my pilot is based on her, a, a dramedy that's based on her. Oh, oh wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> what about you, Latina? I don't know. You know, I've never thought about that. I, I've had emergency kits and things like that because I live in Houston, so we always have to put like little things yes. together just in case the flood comes. Um, so I do have a pack that has all my kids, all of my stuff, all of our, you know, birth certificates and passports and all that stuff ready to go, passwords. 
So that's ready to go. Um, I would probably take a phone, maybe a wedding photo, just because everything else is going to be destroyed. My, might as well have that, and some clothes and socks and underwear, right? Right. Um, <laughs> and if if my calls. husband's not coming with me, and I'm just going to be funny today, I would throw my vibrator in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, girl. Because you never know, right? You never know. Oh, you never know. Next time, you might have somebody take care of that. So I <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it that's funny well, well I, don't have, you, Laura. I don't have a vibrator in my bag <laughs> i have vitamins in my bag but i have a flashlight i have a whistle i have a, oh a whistle yeah yeah because i always like i have one in my car and one in the bag hmm. because you know when i moved to california the winding roads are crazy like we just saw on the news like two days ago how a car went off the cliff Yes. This one passed away, the other one critical oh. condition. And so sometimes you're down there for so long and people don't even know. But if you have that whistle, people are like, where's that, where's that whistling coming from? You know, and then Jason's little dog will hear it come down there like Lassie, come <laughs> alive, you know? So um, I also have socks, I have sneakers, oh. uh, underwear, a sweats, a t-shirt, um, and a flashlight. Did I say flashlight? I think I said flashlight. But, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Good, good. I'm gonna throw another fun one in here. What's your favorite holiday holiday food memory? Like my mom would make homemade peach cobbler. Mm. Homemade. So we do on Christmas Eve, we used to do my parents are from Louisiana. Mm. My mom's from Lake Charles, so this actually where the hurricane just hit. Yes. Um, that's her hometown. So we always have gumbo on Christmas Eve. And it's kind of like just been a tradition in my family forever. And that's always my favorite. So you get full and then you get full again the next day. <laughs> What's inside yeah. the gumbo? What do y'all put in there? Everything. Chicken, shrimp. You can put okra in there. Ugh, I don't like no okra, but I like the shrimp and the everything. Chicken. Yes, everything. <laughs> what about so, it's been a tradition. My husband actually does it now because my husband's a chef, so he actually um, picks it up and he does it now for our family when we're not uh, with my parents. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Jason? Cheesecake. Oh, cheesecake, homemade. Yes, and I make my own homemade cheesecake too. Wonderful. Yeah. Put strawberry on the inside at all? Strawberry. No, strawberry on the outside. On the outside. Yeah. Jason, you should shock yourself, surprise yourself, and put a little strawberry for a surprise. You may like it. <laughs> I made coconut cheesecake too. Ooh, that sounds good. Nice. Nice. All right, LaCour, what's what about you? I was trying to think, you know, my mama wasn't like the best cook. Do you know what? My <laughs> mama, she made some really good potato salad. Okay? okay. And my sister is so rude. Because, you know, my sister, she was like, let me taste this, mama. She was like, mm -mm, no, try again. It ain't the same. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I would say my mother's potato salad. That's okay. all I could really think about that was always a staple. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. In wrapping up the show, are there any words of encouragement that you would like to share with our audience? Anybody can jump in. Man, I would say, you know, it's a lot of darkness right now. And there, and a lot of people say like 2020 is such a waste of a year. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever a waste. They said that 2020 was supposed to be the year a vision and clarity. But when you think about it, a lot of things have been exposed. Yes. The things you yes. have been seeing clearly. And always remember, well, you know, I'm, I'm a believer. I love the Lord. But if you are a believer, all things will work together for your good. Um, so just don't, don't feel like this is a waste. 2020 is not a waste. There is still time and it can get better and things can work out for the good. So just keep that in mind. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off of you, LaCour. I was actually going to talk about 2020, but, um, yeah, 2020 is actually, uh, the year of transition. So if you, I study numerology and things like mm -hmm. that as well. Um, and 2020 is actually the year of transition. And so in order to make change, you have to do drastic change. Mm -hmm. And even though it's hard while you're in it, 
that mm -hmm. what's going to come on the back end is going to be absolutely amazing, I think, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, and so if you use it instead of looking at it as this is such a detriment to me, it's a detriment to the society and people that I know, but look at the positives that come from it you're going to be blown away at what comes next. So just hang in there. It's almost over. Like they say, the, the sun will shine again, yes. um, but it's going to be some drastic change, but it was necessary. You know, we got to a place where um, that shift was needed and, and here we go. So I'm excited. 2020 has been great to me. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. I, oh I, agree, I agree also. Um, yeah, it sucks what we're going through now, but, my creativity has grown immensely. I'm working on new music. Um, I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I'm part of um, three different writers groups. And um, I even started a screenplay about lockdown, but a humorous version. And I just recently met someone that I'm um, involved with, even during the lockdown. So. What? You know, Yes. All right. you, met, you said you just you met a bay, Jason. Yes. Oh, hey, Jason. Go ahead. is not gonna hold Very you down. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right. Oh, wonderful. I'm waiting for all the COVID babies, so that's my business is about to boom time next year. I know, doula. That's so good. You know, yeah. it's so nice to meet doulas. Like that is beautiful because that is yeah. what I want if I ever get pregnant during a quarantine and COVID. You know what I mean? I will not be going to a hospital. Come on over here in my bathtub. Let me Amen. <laughs> and, and also, where can people find you on social media? Um, you guys could find me. My name is LaCora Stevens. Uh, all my information is on my website. So if you visit www.lacorastevens.com, you will see my projects like the Yes Show, Relationship Deep Dive, Dating and Waiting, and much more. So check it out. Awesome. All right. Latina. So you all can find me. My website is Marley uh, Moo Maternity. That's our doula website. We're on Instagram at Marley and Moo. And then I have my personal Instagram is Day Old Mascara. So you can find me there. You can learn about my husband, my kids that drive me nuts on a daily and just uh, follow me there. So awesome. Jason. Um, my Facebook page, Jason Christopher. Cool. Cool. Well, listen, hey. It has been fantastic. I thank you guys for being on the show, What's On Your Mind. Um, you will get an email from us to let you know when this episode is going to air. Please share our website, make comments. Um, we, we just thank you guys. This has been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Continue to have a blessed, phenomenal weekend, and I will be in touch. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you thank guys. You so have much. a great one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.